Hello, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about something we call the ranking, the Brayton cycle. Um, so there are different cycles we need to talk about, and these are like power cycles. So basically, there's something called the Brayton cycle, and there's something called the Rankin cycle. Today we're going to start off by talking about the um, Brayton cycle, and that uses air. The Rankin cycle is sort of like just the Brayton cycle, but it uses water. And um, here's a little mnemonic you can use to remember that. So I write, Rav. So water for Rankin and air for Brayton. So that's just, and, and you probably don't know what I'm saying when I'm saying Brayton Rankin right now, but um, hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll understand what that is. So basically the Brayton cycle is spelled like this, Brayton cycle. And what does cycle imply? That we're starting at one point and coming back to that same point, right? Perfect. So. In the cycles that we've talked about thus far, we've had um, certain things happening from stage one to stage two to stage three to stage four to stage blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing here. So from stage one to two, you're gonna have an isentropic compression. So isentropic compression from stage one to two. And there are four um, stages or four points during the cycle, right? So from two to three, we have constant pressure heat addition. Right? From three to four, isentropic expansion. It's sort of like that diesel cycle we talked about, right? And then four to one constant pressure heat rejection. Cool. So one to two, isentropic compression. Two to three, constant pressure heat addition. Three to four, isentropic expansion. And four to one, constant pressure heat rejection. There's also a little diagram that you should know associated with this whole rank, uh, Brayton cycle. I keep saying Rankin cycle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase these steps, but these are the steps that you need to know and we will hopefully be able to figure everything out, everything else out from these steps. Or you know what, I'll just go ahead and draw it here so that we can go off of those and you can sort of see the thought process that you need to use to remember what you need to draw. So from one to two we have an isentropic compression, right? What causes an isentropic compression? An isentropic compressor, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start from here. I'm just going to draw a compressor. So everything that we've been learning about is sort of building upon itself, right? What do we have in a compressor? We have work going into the compressor, right? So I'm gonna draw this work going in. So this is point one. So from stage one to stage two, we have an isentropic compression, right? From point two to point three, we have something we call constant pressure heat addition. So we have something we call a boiler, right? And this is a compressor, all right? Like Compressor, boiler, right? And that boiler, what do you think it does? It just heats up the, well, the boiler we like to use for water, but in this situation, it's air, right? So I have my Q in, but that's really the important part. Just remember that there's a Q in with the boiler, okay? Um, three to four, isentropic expansion. What do you think does that? Um, the name isn't as intuitive as a compressor is for the isentropic compression, but it's just a turbine. When you think about it, a turbine does expand, right? So from three to four, we have a turbine. I'll draw it like this. Oops. We have a turbine and that's putting work out. And I don't really think it matters the way you draw the turbine, if it's facing this way, facing this way. I just drew it like this because sometimes they have like, um, I think it's a regeneration cycle and it, it sometimes takes the work out of the turbine and puts it back into that compressor to sort of make things a little bit more efficient. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about that right now. Let me make this compressor a little bit smaller. And then, cause I like to line my lines up. So from three to four, we have that isentropic expansion. And then four to one, we have that constant pressure heat rejection. And this is something, let me write turbine here. And then this is something we call a condenser. Condensor, condenser, let me double check. 
condenser ER, okay? And then for the condenser, I like to line these up, so for the condenser we have Q dot out. So it's pretty straightforward, right? This is the, the diagram that you get when you have the Brayton cycle, okay? Um, now, there's some graphs that are associated with the Brayton cycle, and we need to know how to draw these graphs in order to be able to get our full points on the exam, right? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, hmm, let me use black first of all, then I'm gonna go ahead and draw it here. So let's start off with, the, um, let's do TS. So um, with the TS diagram, right, we know that we're comparing temperature and entropy, right? So um, when you hear the word isentropic, you should automatically know that that means that there's no change in entropy. So our graph is either gonna go straight up or straight down. And in this situation, because we're compressing, it's gonna go straight up. So from point one, let me draw it here, to two, we're going straight up, okay? That's one to two. And it's sort of tough for me sometimes to remember if it's curving in or out on the graph. So like, um, when I say curving in or out, from two to three, we have constant pressure heat addition, right? So we know that our temperature is going up, right? And if it's at a constant pressure, we're gonna find that the entropy is increasing, right? Since, since it's not an isentropic process. So we're gonna end up doing something like this. And this is what I was saying when I'm not sure sometimes if it curves inward or outward, and I don't really have a mnemonic to come up with that, so you're just gonna have to remember that for now. I'll try and come up with something that, that sort of tells me how it curves, um, but for now, I, I, I really don't have anything. I guess probably what you could remember is on a phase changing diagram, it sort of goes like this, right? But I don't wanna confuse you because we're dealing with, with air for the Brayton cycle. But when we're dealing with that, when it's going outside of that dome, that constant pressure line sort of looks like that. I guess you can sort of use that to remember it. Hope that helps a little bit. But um, that's two to three. From three to four, we just have that opposite of this, right? So this went from down to up. This went from left to right. This one is not going from up to down because it's an expansion. So our temperature ends up reducing, okay? And our entropy stays the same. And then we know we just have to connect the point back. So since it's a cycle, we just have to connect the points back. Let me do it like this. So this is what your graph should end up looking like. And then this is four. And then we're not done with this graph though. Um, from one to two, we have isentropic compression, right? So we're putting work in because it's a compressor. Oh, this marker is going bad. We're putting work in because it's a compressor, right? So what we're gonna end up having is you just have to uh, signify this on the graph. So w dot in. Right? So, pretty straightforward. Um, don't forget to recycle. Always recycle your plastic. Um, from two to three, we have constant pressure heat addition. So heat is coming in, right? Isn't this the marker that I, okay. It's all good. Q in, right? From three to four, we have um, isentropic expansion. So that's what's producing our work, right? Work out. And then from four to one, we have Q dot out. And that's your TS diagram, okay? Um, it's pretty straightforward once you think about it. Just try and remember these steps. If you want to write them down, write them down, and that's what you get. Um, but that's not the only diagram we have, right? Let me go ahead and draw this in red since my black uh, marker is misbehaving. Um, we're gonna draw a PV diagram also, okay? So that's pressure versus volume or specific volume. It doesn't really matter. Um, let me make that a little bit wider. So from one to two, we have that isentropic expansion, right? Now let's think about what happens during an expansion. I mean, sorry, isentropic compression. Now let's think about what happens during a compression. The pressure goes up and the volume goes down, right? So um, what's gonna happen to our PV graph, uh, PV diagram? Um, Yeah, so the pressure goes up and the volume goes down. And again, it's sort of that situation in which we don't, that I can't really tell you how to remember that curve, right? But that curve, it's, it's, it's gonna curve outward like this. And I don't really know how you wanna remember that. Maybe, 
since since this is sort of like a diesel cycle, you can sort of remember the graph for the diesel cycle, but that's really what we end up getting. Um, again, I'll try and come up with a mnemonic for that. Um, so this is from one to two. From two to three, we have constant pressure heat addition, and we're gonna find that the volume actually um, expands, okay? Um, how can we make logic out of that? Well, volume expanding, since it's at a constant pressure, think about um, what happens when you have a, a, a free piston cylinder. When it's at a con a free piston cylinder is at a constant pressure, right? But when you're adding heat, it causes that gas to expand. So that's what you can that's what you can use to remember that. Um, let me make that a little bit shorter. So that's from point two to three, okay? From point three to four, it's isentropic expansion. We're gonna find that the volume gets bigger and the pressure goes down. So it's like this, and then you just match up your points, and then you know it's gonna end up going that way because it's a heat rejection. So that's point four, but are we done? No, we're not done yet. From one to two, we have the isentropic compression. We put work into our system. From two to three, constant pressure heat addition, we put heat into our system. From three to four, work out. And from four to one, heat out. And that's what we have for our diagrams for the um, Brayton cycle. Um, what else can I talk to you about? Um, there's something you need to know called um, reversible work for um, single stream steady state devices. So we're dealing with single stream steady state devices here, right? We have one inlet and one outlet for each of these turbines and compressors and we're dealing with a steady state process and it's reversible work because they're isentropic, right? So you get this when you deal with that equation. You get that that's equal to the negative integral of V dP, okay? And um, that's basically, this is for big work, so big V, let's say. That's my big W, okay? And then specific, what I guess would just be the integral of, of the small v dp, right? And what you get when you have a um, constant volume, you can just pull out that v and you can get a change in pressure. So it becomes v delta p, right? So that's for our uh, Brayton cycle, right? And um, this negative is, is basically just to account for the fact that the work is going in, okay? Um, that's really, oh, okay, let me talk about pressure ratios quickly. So you're gonna have something called a pressure ratio in a, um, in a Brayton cycle. And um, what you're gonna have is, I think it's, is it denoted by R? Okay, they didn't write it here. But let me just write pressure ratio. Whatever letter that your teacher uses to denote the pressure ratio, just know that it's gonna be the same thing. It's just gonna be the maximum pressure over the minimum pressure. So that's P max over P min. And what is that equal to? Where is our maximum pressure in this diagram? It's at point two, and our minimum is at point one, right? So I can say P2 over P1. But what else do we notice? P2 over P1 is also the same as P3 over P4, because those are from P1 to P2, or sorry, from P2 to P3, we have a constant pressure, right? And P4 to P1, constant pressure. So I can also write um, P3 over P4. And that's, really what you need to know for the Brayton cycle. Um, there are some things here and there, but we'll do an example problem and we'll go over it and hopefully it'll become more clear. Again, as always, if you don't understand anything that I've written up here, please feel free to leave comments in the comment section. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and, and, and let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.